Beneath the quiet town of Wieliczka in Poland, an incredible hidden world exists, with passages that extend 327 metres below ground level and zigzag for over 245 kilometres. So join me for a whistle-stop geek out at this awesome place. This was outside and you'll note I'm in an incredibly chunky coat, but I didn't keep that on for long because even though there was snow on the ground, it's actually 15 degrees underground pretty much all year round. So I joined the back of a massive queue and off we went. Dear guests, in a moment, a group of individual tourists with an English speaking guide will enter the historic salt mine. Yep, that's us. Before long, we began our descent, 64 meters of steps. So this was looking down and this was how far we'd come. You can see that it's just a lot of steps. <laughs> it was just a vanishing point in both directions. It was nuts. And it was here that we started to get our first glimpses of the salt, including these funny little salt stalactites, which I thought were so cool. And I can confirm that even when it looks gray, it is in fact still salt. So how did all the salt get here? Around 13.6 million years ago, this area was covered by a shallow sea. When the water evaporated, it left behind massive deposits of rock salt, or halite, if you want to sound fancy. Over time, this salt got buried, and then tectonic movements have caused it to all buckle and fold, increasing the thickness of the salt. You can easily see this folding and thickening of the rocks in the very structures of the walls themselves. I've done a quick bit of annotation here so you can kind of get an idea, but you can really see how it's been smashed up and it's not this flat surface it would have deposited as. So when medieval miners came across it, they found a huge thickness of salt that they could make the best of. And make the best of it they did, because some of these caverns are massive. And where I'm standing, all would have been salt. These caverns in the upper levels often exploit these blocks of salt embedded within the surrounding claystone. It's a type of mega breccia, and in this case basically means that all these big blocks that are now caverns basically broke off and got embedded during the tectonic activity. Kind of like this banana. The stuff in the centre gets all squished and deformed, but those big bits, they break off and kind of stay intact, with the squishy bits being the pure and premium salt down here. Personally, I get excited over the geology, but it isn't just a geological phenomenon. It's a cultural one too. Religion was super important to the miners and you can kind of picture once you're a long way underground, everything feels very far away and things can go wrong quickly. So the miners built lots of chapels underground to help them feel close to God. And the most famous one that everyone sees on the route is St King's Chapel. It was absolutely mind blowing how huge this space was underground. It's carved entirely from rock salt and even this was my favourite. You had the last supper done in salt. It was incredible. And the big chandeliers you see, those crystals, you guessed it, are also made of salt. The rest of the chandelier structure is made of wood, and this is a common theme around the mine, but why? So one of the things that I found absolutely nuts was all the wooden supports. Now, a lot of these are entire tree trunks that have been down there for hundreds of years, but the salt itself gets into the wood and preserves it. Now, you couldn't be using metal all the time because actually that would end up corroding because, I mean, my last car got pretty much dissolved by salt water thanks to living close to the sea. It, it corrodes, it happens. But if you use wood, the salt actually acts as a preservative and stops the wood from decaying. So whilst it may look very medieval, it's actually one of the best things they could be using. That said, particularly in the restaurant, I did notice they're still using rock bolts. Because that is quite a fissure going through the roof and my engineering brain can't quite unsee it. But it didn't bother me too much and I can hands down say this is the coolest place I've ever had a beer. Literally 125 metres below ground level. But enough beer, back to wood. So, how did they move all these tree trunks and salt blocks around down here? Horses. And a lot of these horses lived their entire lives underground. And they were quite well cared for because literally this was what kept the mine going. And how do you get a horse down here? Well, via a pulley system, obviously. They would send up salt blocks and then send down whatever they needed, whether that was wood or a horse. These cylinders were an ideal shape for transport, and I found it really cool seeing the historic mining methods. Now, if you go to the gift shops now, you'll see they sell salt, but they don't mine it anymore, so how does that work? All of the salt that you see in the shops these days has come out of the water that they pump out to the mine. So this is called more of a secondary salt rather than the primary stuff that they would have dug out to start with. It's actually more of a necessity rather than a money-making scheme because the water itself is the enemy to salt. As we know, water dissolves salt. 
so they need to get as much water out of the mines as possible so that it doesn't dissolve any further. Consequently, two birds, one stone. Sell salt to tourists, get water out the mine, it's a good deal. And the drainage system is amazing, so the lights show where the leakages are. And it all filters down to two tanks at the bottom before it then gets pumped back to the surface. But if you don't keep the maintenance up, the salt crystals will encrust on everything, leading to some amazing salt crystal formations. So this, I'm absolutely obsessed with. Can you see? So this is part of an old ladder, and all the salt's crystallised on the outside as the water's come through. So if you're not aware, halite, aka salt, when left to grow undisturbed with nothing compressing it in, will naturally form into these incredible cubes. This is actually due to the atomic structure of halite itself. But to be fair, crystallography is probably its own video. <laughs> Bonus picture, no one pointed it out on the tour, but I spotted this on a wall and there was an amazing little fragment of fossilised plant in the rock. It didn't say, but it looks quite woody to me. So I did some digging and found that someone had posted some brilliant pictures on a forum of some other fossils from the place. But I don't know where this exhibition was, so I clearly missed it. But grass, pine cones, it paints a pretty picture of what might have been bordering this sea 13 million years ago. So as I promised to keep this video short and salty, I'm going to finish it there along with my beer and hopefully see you back for whatever geology excapade I'm on next.